there. Why, hello there. Welcome back. This is going to be a video about more C++ shit. And the shit in particular today is templates. Templates are, by far, next to maybe polymorphic inheritance, one of the most complicated aspects of C++. They are insane. Um, they can get insane, complexity-wise. And for that reason, uh, just like everything else in this video series, I don't want to go too far into them. I just want to go over the basic concept of what they are, and that's enough to get most people started. Most people never have to get to the level of complexity with templates to write some of the template code that can that can get you into that trouble. So now that I've scared you away from them, let's talk about them. So C++ is not the most dynamic language in the world. A lot of the decisions that are made um, to allow C++ to do dynamic things are done at what's called compile time. The decisions are made ahead of time by the compiler and by the time the code is ran, everything appears to be rather static or um, yeah, statically bound. So static binding or, or, or compile time binding is essentially what templates um, work, how they work. So the, op the opposite concept would be the virtual inheritance, the virtual functions. Um, that's runtime dynamic stuff, but it can be a little, a little bit limited in what it can accomplish. So let me explain. Suppose you had a function that did something very, very simple that you know was defined on a certain class of variable types that you wanted to do for more than just that one type. So um, a good example might be something along, along the lines of power of 2. So basically what you do is you take the argument here and you say return i times i, right? Now suppose you wanted to do that but you had a bunch of math code in your game or your library that was calling that on everything. So basically power of 2 now remember, you could do function overloading, so you could define this for all your different types. You could define it for short. You could define it for you went 64t, 64 bits. You could define it for int 64t for non-unsigned 64-bit type. You could define it for floats. You could define it for doubles, and so forth. So that basically I can call this function. You could define that for basically anything you want to pass in. This will go into the float version. That's funny. Oh yeah, it gets even more fun. You gotta have the right return value in here too. So there we go. Um, 0.5 squared is 0.25. And if I take the f off, it'll go into the double version. So, suppose I have my own special crazy integer class. I would want to define it for that as well. So every single time I want to do power of 2 on a numeric type where the operator asterisk is defined between them, I have to write another stupid instance of this function. This is a case where templates can save you a lot of time. Ideally, what you'd like to do here is tell all these to piss off and just have one and basically put something in here that says number type, right? And then return number type and allow this code to work. And you don't want to have to define some stupid number type class that can be created with an um, implicit operator type of some number. That's one way to do it and that might work and it might not but there are cases where um, that would be a giant pain in the ass as well so this is essentially where templates come in and kinda help so what a template is let me first show you the syntax is basically a special declaration syntax out of a function that tells you that you basically have some variable t which if you can name this anything you want as a matter of fact maybe I'll keep it with number type it's some variable type that essentially becomes a templatized type within your code that follows. So for this function, we are generating what's called a template. That template function is called power of two, and number type is the templatized type in that function. 
And basically what this allows me to do <clears throat> is generate a template of this function every single time I use it for a given type. So basically by calling this with 0.5, I generate this code as if number type was double here. And it's important to note that the way, god damn it, sorry. It's important to note that the way uh, templates work is that all these decisions are made when the code is being compiled. This template function and this template code is generating the function when the compiler is compiling and by the time the program is ran it is as if I wrote all those functions you saw before except it only does it on demand. It'll generate one of these for every single time every single time I write uh, this with a specific argument type I get a specific power of 2 to handle it. So much so that actually if I put this with a type that's wrong it should fail to compile. And what it'll do is, and this is one of the things, the reason why people hate C++ uh, template code, is that the errors can be very hard to figure out um, because it can't tell you that there's a compiler error in this code until you instantiate one of the templates. So usually you'll see something along the lines of this kind of error. Um, it's very hard to follow. This, this is a simple program, so you get the idea, but it's hard to follow. But basically, the underlying error is, in this specific instantiation of the template with the string arguments, you can't multiply two pointers together. It doesn't make sense. And that's what this is. It's a const char star C string type. So um, that is a very basic example of a template function. What else can you do with templates? So templates cannot just be for functions. They can be a very more powerful case essentially for classes. So if you guys remember, um, I'll, I'll save this. If you guys remember, I had something called interray. And interray was basically a very stupid impartial class that I wrote um, during some of my other video tutorial series, or some of my other uh, tutorial videos in this series. And it's basically a uh, partially finished, for example, array of integers um, that can be used from my code anywhere else. Um, commonly, when you write something like this, uh, a data structure class, you will be more interested in being able to have your array support other types besides just int. And in the past, what you'd have to do to accomplish something like that would essentially be to write a separate version of that class for every single time of type. So int array, float array, short array, and there are cases where you still want to do that. Um, but if you want to save some time and you've made the decision that you're willing to accept the complexity that templates bring, um, then you might decide to make that a template class, and that's certainly possible. And it's actually pretty simple um, to do um, with some caveats, and I'm going to explain what those are. Um, the biggest caveat, well, let me, let me at least templatize the class first. So template type name t interay. Interay has just become a template class now. I can use t anywhere inside of the definition of this class. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm basically, this no longer makes sense to be called interay. I'm just going to call it array. And every single time where I use integers in here with respect to things that should remain int, like and the number of elements that should stay in int, every single time I use int, I'm going to replace it with t. So we are basically now an array of t, which can be anything. All right. So let's keep refactoring this. Int array operator, that's concatenation, this i got to actually think when I'm doing this. And it's a T pointer now instead of an int pointer to write data. So I think I covered the header. Now for the implementation, we are... i got to rename these files, so let me do that real quickly. And array has just become array. just want to be thorough here. I want to teach you guys bad habits like leaving the wrong old name in there. 
So now in the CPP, I include array. Everywhere I have int array, I replace with array. And I keep note of the fact that what I'm doing inside here uh, is templatized, which means, and this is where it gets a little bit weird. If I were to try to, let me make sure, I, uh, yeah, if I were to try to build this, I would get a lot of problems. Um, it would basically say that there's a bunch of errors that can't find the specific classes that I'm defining here. So basically, I no longer can just define these as normal. I basically have to say that they're all templatized. So I'm going to go ahead and do that pretty much everywhere in front of every one of these functions to say that I'm defining implementations of templatized member functions for the class. I'm also, that's, that also allows me to use T safely because I'm essentially inside the context of a template here. When I'm inside the class, I wouldn't have to do that. Like if I was defining these functions in line, um, I wouldn't have to do that. But because I'm outside of the scope of array, I need to basically remind the compiler that, hey, we're dealing with a template class here. So I'm just making sure that I don't use int in any cases where I shouldn't. Should int. Ha. All right, sorry. That was a terrible joke. Um, T operator int index. It's funny to do these videos because while I'm trying to explain myself, it can be very easy to like um, screw up and uh, make a mistake. And I don't want to do that. So I might just really look over this, make sure that I don't do anything stupid like this. This needs to be T. Operator assignment, this needs to be T. This needs to be T. That's okay. This needs to be T. This needs to be T. Well, that's really stupid. I got new up here, and I got free down there. Notice I'm using the square brackets when I delete the data now, um, because this could be an array of... <coughs> C++ types that have their own destructors defined, and I need to uh, support that. There we go. It looks like I'm good here. Okay. Notice that there's still probably going to be a problem when I try to build this. So it's important to note that when you're doing this, you basically now have to use array of T um, to tell yourself that basically you're defining functions for a templatized class. And you got to kind of do that throughout, and that's kind of annoying, but, you know, it comes with the territory of templates. It's one of the reasons, like I said, why people don't like templates is once you start using them, your syntax starts to get pretty unruly. But if you stick to your uh, understanding, your basic understanding of what you're doing, um, it, it, and, and you do really do learn the syntax and take time to understand it, uh, it starts to become second nature to you to basically understand what this stuff is. Now, this is important. I've done all this work, and believe it or not, it's telling me that we're still not done here. Templates, once you use a template, you have to define the code for the template in the same header file that uses it. You no longer can link the actual code or the implementation of this class separately. So I was using array as an int array in my main code before, and now basically all I'm going to do is instantiate this class the way it was. Okay, so I did all that work. <laughs> we're still not done. I never said templates were uh, simple. So that thing I was saying before, that still applies. When I include array.h from main, all it sees is that, hey, there's this template class. There's no way for me, for the compiler, to access this code that it needs to instantiate the template on the fly anymore. This is like I said, when you, when you accept the complexity of the, hey, I'm going to start using templates, you kind of have to deal with all this stuff. So commonly what people will do in this case is they will actually take all of this code and they will put it directly in the header file as well. And there are ways to keep yourself organized. A lot of template class writers will just start implementing the code right here. That'll do it. Uh, I prefer to keep my code somewhat separate still so I can think of the header and the CPP conceptually as the same. So what I like to do in that case, actually, is I like to take the CPP file 
and I basically like to name it a header file as well and just call it something along the lines of implementation sometimes I'll use like HPP um, but I don't I don't know if Espresso C supports that um, so I don't I don't want it to get confused but basically by telling myself that this is an implementation I then include that directly from beneath the header file and it basically accesses all the code right in line like that. There we go. And after I do that, after all that craziness, it works. I have my template class. I can instantiate it any way I wish. Again, the reason why you have to do this is that templates must have the full code accessible from the header file to work. You can't say, oh, there's a CPP coming later. That works perfectly with regular classes, and that's what you should do with regular classes. But when you're using templates, you have to put that code in the same compile pass that goes through the header file. I know it's very confusing initially and it's actually very ugly. I've seen people write extremely ugly template code as a result of this. But essentially this class does not exist until you instantiate it. You could put errors all throughout it and you won't see those until you instantiate it for a specific type. So that's what a template class looks like. Just to prove that it's a template I'm going to swap all my array of ints out for array of floats and you'll see that it'll work all the same. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. There you go. I know it just says 50, but it's a float now instead. If you want proof, you could do something dumb like this. And you probably would get a uh, different result that wouldn't work the same if you had, you know, uh, integers instead. So that's what a template class looks like. There's a hell of a lot more I could cover about templates. Um, they're one of the hardest aspects of C++ to master, and I glossed over it in probably like a 15-minute video, and you guys are probably like, holy shit, what, what just happened to my head and my brain? But um, at least, you know, I, I, I covered it in the, in the series, and I introduced you guys to it in the best simple way I possibly could, and um, this stuff is extremely powerful. As you're going to see in the next video when I talk about data structures, the kind of things you can accomplish when you start abstracting types out into templates is crazy. Um, so that's templates. I'm leaving. Goodbye.